Well, first of all, I think the most important thing you want to recognize, you have a lot to learn, and that influences how well you execute your responsibility. You know, Oregon Tech is, is a great institution. It has gained its reputation from being relevant to who we serve as Oregon Tech. So given that I'm actively using this time to listen to as many people, ask for their ideas, I, of course I have my own ideas, but I'm not here to prescribe. I want to listen to people, learn what has worked well, what are some of the opportunities, so that between the two we'll uh, develop and formulate a new future. What endeared me to this is the opportunity to make a difference. And I could sense not only the university, but also the town and the people of the town are truly engaged with a common goal. And that is uh, that really came out very clearly when I came here. Well, first of all, I want to recognize Dr. Kenton for a phenomenal job he has done. And he has been encouraging from day one. So I am beginning to learn about the various initiatives that are underway. And that the unique opportunities are not only in Klamath Falls, but then people in Klamath Falls can contribute to all those opportunities that are not physically connected here. So that's why you look at the institutional direction. So for example, there are major initiatives under rural health, certainly the new manufacturing initiative with an industrial partner. So that you don't tie it to the geography, you kind of look at what that means to the people that are part of it. So put the focus always on the people, the new opportunities will evolve. Obviously we have finite capacity. We cannot be doing a whole bunch of new things for the sake of doing new things. So in the process, uh, we have to reach out to the people of the university and in a consultative way, determine what we will walk away from if we want to undertake new things. Doesn't matter what the organization is, there is always scope for improvement. And the great thing is Oregon Tech has a fine reputation as an institution that makes a tremendous difference in the lives of the students that come here. I think now there is an opportunity to go to the next level of excellence. Uh, for example, the experiential component we speak about, I think now we should really look at some integrated professional development. I always tell my students, it's uh, you have to know stuff, but then you have to know that you know stuff. When you have that inner confidence, you can be second to none. So part of it is redirecting in some areas, again working with the faculty and staff and the students because they are the active participants that are going to make things happen. In higher education, that is a continuing conversation on resources. When I started teaching in 1986, if they gave me a box of white chalk, I was happy. <laughs> if they gave me a box of colored chalk, I thought I hit a jackpot. <laughs> that is not quite the case anymore. Uh, there are new technologies that we want our students to be adept in the latest and the very best. So these resources uh, place a lot of demand on the campus fiscal infrastructure. And it is not only the money to buy the infrastructure, we need to train the people to use it effectively. All of this translates to the amount of funding that is needed and we cannot do it on the backs of our students and their families. So coming up with new and creative mechanisms with which we can get new sources of revenue, certainly the making the case to our elected officials. I'm very appreciative of what Governor Brown and her and our other officers are doing in uh, Salem right now. They are considering supporting us and uh, they also recognize the current level of funding is inadequate to support the kind of the opportunities we want to create for our students. So we want to work cooperatively with the other presidents of other universities and see what we can do collectively and what we can do individually as campuses. We certainly want to be at the leading edge of what we deliver to our students. We, out of our convenience, we cannot be teaching antiquated stuff. But that does not mean the past is not relevant. That is, the foundational things still come from the past. Part of it is our faculty, I have to applaud them. They are already coming up with so many new ideas. Oregon Tech is one of only two programs to have a degree program in renewable energy. And I just met a young man from, uh, uh, from Dubai who came here because this is the only accredited program he knew about in renewable energy. So I think Creating these distinctive programs, that's something I speak to all the audiences about. I think we have to be looking at new programming at the intersection of the people's passion, their expertise, 
the opportunities, the affordability, and then of course it has to be economically sustainable. All translates to great opportunities for our students so that our employers will seek them out. How students believe they are so prepared for their careers. Ultimately, when they don't walk away with that conviction, our objective is not, our mission is not fully met. I think they, our students, I think in a, one of the recent national assessments, said they felt they are best prepared for careers. And we want to use it as a foundation, notch it up, several notches. I think this school is poised for great things, and I think that is interest to go up several different levels. Uh, I think uh, one of the things I have heard and mentioned in writing, as well as in other comments, is Oregon Tech is ready to blast off. I want people to know where I come from. The mascot was a rocket. So, <laughs> you are the right man for the job, and I truly look forward to being part of Climate Falls and Oregon Tech.